Hello and welcome back to Nucleus Shortcuts. I'm your host, Adam Dudley, and our topic today is what is SSVC? So today's expert on the topic is Ryan. Ryan is a Nucleus Vulnerability Research Engineer. What the heck is SSVC? SSVC uh, stands for Stakeholder Specific Vulnerability Categorization. It's a framework uh, designed around the idea that um, the decisions about vulnerabilities rather than the severity of the vulnerability mm -hmm. are more important when thinking about prioritization in the okay. process of vulnerability management. SSVC, um, as an idea, it, it aims to improve the decision-making process specifically mm -hmm. in vulnerability management. Um, so they, they you do this by using decision trees. Yep. Um, and so the framework is designed so that um, you know, you can inherently have uh, multiple decision trees, so like of different types, okay. depending on your role um, in the process. So, for mm -hmm. example, the SSVC framework has um, the patch applier um, decision tree, the okay. patch uh, deployer decision tree, and then also with the okay. release of the 2.0 version, they have the um, patch coordinator okay. uh, decision tree. So, so, so it's the role is based on the role. Yeah. So the so the framework itself is kind of inherently designed with with that idea in mind that vulnerability management has a lot of different hands in the process. Yeah. Um, so it, that's 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 kind of an advantage that that I see with it. It acknowledges that vulnerability management is a very complex process with a lot of a lot of sub processes and also a lot of people involved. Right. So mm -hmm. let's take the. Uh, the patch deployer uh, decision tree, for example. So the, mm -hmm. if you were to use the the most basic, uh, you know, deployer tree given to you by the SSVC framework, mm -hmm. um, there are four different possibilities that can arise when you kind of work your way through the decision tree. So um, there is defer, um, and that means to set aside the vulnerability, um, or okay. rather set aside the patch for the vulnerability and to not apply it at present time. Okay. Um, there is scheduled, Means which means to apply a fix to the vulnerability, um, and then you know apply that uh, update in your environment's normal patch cycle, whatever that may be. Uh, and then there is out of cycle, which means to um, apply a fix to the vulnerability, and then also apply that update um, out of your uh, normal out of or rather out of your at normal patch cycle. Um, yeah. And then uh, there's immediate, uh, which means to you know apply the security fix as as soon as possible, um, you know uh, like take on all re possible resources that you can to do this, and okay. also you know even if it hinders production, um, get you know get the fix out. Um, they can they can certainly differ. Um, the okay. the overall idea as you're going throughout the trees are are definitely pretty similar in nature, um, mm -hmm. but the, but the final results can definitely uh, differ depending on. Uh, what okay. your particular role and the uh, you know the effect of of the whole process might be. So what the thing I was going to mention that it remind me of was um, this ancient decision making framework I've been using forever to deal with I'll just call them inputs. You know, every day in life and in work we have inputs coming at us, whether it's a Slack message or an email or a, a meeting request or whatever it is. And I think it actually came from a ancient book about paper filing, <laughs> like how to, mm -hmm. how, how to keep up with, you know, when people actually had inboxes on their desk and paper would land in there, but it's called FAD, F-A-D, and it stands for File Act Delete. And I can see now where you could maybe make it F-A-D-D, -D, where like uh, D is maybe defer or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you could improve upon it. But anyway, that was for paper filing a million years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and there's there's certainly merit to that uh, comparison as well, because, you know, if you if you sit there with your piece of paper that you're going to file and you have two boxes in front of you yeah. uh, and, you know, and you sit there for an hour thinking about which which box should I put this in? You're, you're going to spend an hour on yeah. each paper that you're filing and, and very slowly the, the stacks of paper are going to get higher and higher and, and the backlog is going to get uh, you know, larger and larger. And so that's that's definitely a very clear contrast to um, vulnerability management today and how teams are, are definitely just suffering from uh, the, the overload of not only, you know, too many vulnerabilities to handle in general, but also too many high and critical vulnerabilities that say, yeah. hey, your environment is in immediate danger and this is a very large fire. There's just, there's simply too many of those right now. And so um, you know, SSVC as an idea kind of aims to to take a step back and think about, um, you know, are, is, is the way that we're currently prioritizing things even the most efficient way that we should do it? And, um, you know, so it, yeah. it, 
it, it definitely has a, a good advantage there as well. You know, the vulnerability management programs that our customers, you know, run, for example, why, why should it matter to them? Why is it something interesting for them to potentially implement in their program? Mm -hmm. So SSVC, I think it's, I think its biggest advantage um, is that it, it, takes the, you know, a lot of organizations might use severity today as, as sure. their means of prioritization. In sure. general. Um, and so, you know, usually the way you would go about doing that is using CVSS scores. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that kind of goes into the problem that I spoke about earlier, where, you know, you have so many high and critical vulnerabilities, there's just, there's just no actual yeah. uh, way to prioritize in, in reality yeah. with actual human hands doing the work. Sure. Um, so, so SSVC aims to, uh, you know, take that severity that is the entire scope of prioritization, and instead of, you know, leaning on that heavily, only making it one part of the decision tree okay. as, as a whole. So, you know, the so for example, the um, the deployer tree um, given mm -hmm. to you by the framework. So, um, it it starts specifically with, you know, is there an exploit available? Is it is it widely available and widely being exploited, or is there a, a proof of concept available? Okay. And you know, is it is it even possible to exploit? Um, and then you know, if it's not, you know, all of those routes have have a uh, different um, ways down the tree. If you work for an organization that that makes software, um, mm -hmm. highly likely your uh, you know your supplier tree is going to belong to um, like your development teams. They're the okay. actual patch supplier. They're the ones you know changing the code and 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 supplying the patch itself. And then the the patch deployer um, is highly likely something like your your IT operations team. Uh, you know the people that actually uh, go about pushing out the update to you know all of all of production. Okay. Um, so so when when thinking about the supplier tree, um, so you know you think about. Uh, exploitation, and if there's none, or if there's proof of concept, or if it's widely available, and then beyond that, you're thinking about um, when the attacker is able to exploit it. Um, is it is it laborious for the attacker, or is it efficient, or is it super effective? And that essentially means, you know, upon gaining access or upon exploiting the vulnerability, how much of an effort is the attacker now putting in? to uh, make a wider impact based on what they've already got. Okay. What does this look like, you know, implemented in an organization? They have a GitHub available where they can, where you can actually, um, you know, apply this to your, your current oh. playbooks or your, or your current processes within your team. Um, but highly likely it's, it's definitely a, a scenario in which, you know, if, if SSVC is something you want to implement, it definitely requires, uh, you know, more hands than, than likely just the, the small amount of folks uh, purely responsible for vulnerability management. It's it's going to require communication with your sysadmin team. It's going to require communication with your developers. It's going to okay. require communication with uh, you know executives and other people responsible for communication that might uh, come about. When SSVC 2.0 came out, um, yeah. they also released a coordinator tree, um, and so okay. that kind of revolves around the uh, the person or the stakeholder obviously responsible uh, for for coordinating okay. all of this. Um, so, so essentially, you know, the, the processes can all look very different. So it's, it's definitely something that, um, you know, you need to include quite a lot of people in your organization in. And I think there's also another inherent benefit there too, because, you know, as, as we're slowly learning more and more about vulnerability management itself and, and trying to improve it, we're, we're learning and realizing that, you know, it has to involve the whole organization. And so that's, sure. that's the whole rise of DevSecOps and other things like that. Like that's, that's kind of along that that thought that vulnerability management itself definitely requires, um, you know, more more hands than just the the yeah. few people assigned to <laughs> supplying yeah. the patches. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're asking dis disparate teams that maybe haven't worked together before. You're you're mm -hmm. having to make them work together. Is that right? Yeah, that's that that could be certainly possible, especially if you know your your security shop isn't isn't uh, very matured and and you yeah. don't really have a lot of communication outside of. Um, you know, the, the IT or sysadmin team, uh, that, that if you want something like SSVC to really work and shine, that something like that has to change. Um, and you have to learn yeah. to, you know, have, have wider communication and, and wider uh, playbooks around uh, remediating vulnerabilities. Not only can you customize the trees and, and mm -hmm. make your own, but also you can, uh, you, you can certainly assign different uh, stakeholder specific decisions. Okay. To, to whatever role it might be or whatever uh, business context you might be considering. So if it's if it's something like um, you know what is the what is the threat intelligence surrounding the specific vulnerability, it's 
you know, you apply that to the, the supplier and the deployer, but that might not be as important to the coordinator. Um, there are just there are different things to consider depending on what uh, business context is involved in the decisions um, that that kind of relate to um, each of the stakeholder specific trees. Well, one of the more neat parts about the framework is is mm -hmm. the, the specific idea that you can also customize it and make your own. And there sure. there is a little bit of a disclaimer within within the confines of of the decision yeah. tree itself. You know, don't expect total success if you just kind of make your own willy nilly. You definitely there are still things yeah. to consider when um, creating your own decision tree, you definitely don't want the final result to be uh, defer way too often or, or something yeah. like that. So yeah. you know, it's definitely important to, to remember, uh, you know, sort of the, the disclaimers surrounding creating your own tree from, sure. from the beginning of scope, but it's also, it's also certainly necessary for, for, you know, your own unique environment. There might be some weird use cases that um, sort of require a, uh, you know, uh, certain different outcomes yeah. that, that uh, environments might not require. CISA actually um, greatly explored SSVC and kind of applied their own uh, decision tree process. Okay. To I didn't what know they're that. Doing. Yeah, and then and then they're also going to start um, sort of populating NVD um, with uh, results from this decision tree. So, like, they're interesting. I think that's something that they're working on, but I, I'd have to catch up on that. I'm not entirely sure where yeah. that's at. Decisions are are not numbers. Uh, decisions are qualitative actions that an organization can take. Um, so, you know, many organizations today still use CVSS as, uh, you know, their primary yeah. means of prioritization. And, you know, as we realize, as, as the exponential graph of overall exposed yeah. vulnerabilities continues to get higher and higher right. and higher, um, you know, something, something like that's slowly going to become less and less practical. And so I think SSVC, uh, just as a system, um, sort of tries to just make that one part of decision making about a, a specific vulnerability. It just tries to make that whole process, uh, you know, more efficient, so that uh, you can you can sort of lower the fires a little bit. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that explanation. And you mentioned first in there. Is that at? Do you recall? Is that at first.org? Just in yes. case first.org, right? That's also where people can find information on EPSS as well, I think. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Right. Right.